All right. So what's the deal with trail cameras? I'm going to go over a handful of items here for all you, uh, whether you use trail cameras for hunting or for security of your rural property or home or whatever, or trying to get something other than game on trail camera, whatever it is you're after. I'm going to discuss a few points that I keep seeing people, I keep seeing people mess up royally and wasting a lot of their time. And trust me, if, if I've, there's nothing worse than wasting your time when it comes to using these things. Not the worst. Now these two trail cameras I have in my hands right now, these are my two of my least favorite of all trail cameras. These are garbage. Browning sucks. Now this is a UA camera, sucks times 10. Um, anything I don't like as much as these two, stealth camera. I've got a box of stealth cameras that have failed, a box of them. And that's at 225 bucks a pop. <laughs> so it gets a little frustrating. So when you see these things in my hand, these are just using, I'm just using these as examples. I'm not promoting these things for sure. Now why I throw those, those two inch stock straps away is because first off, they don't match, they're rarely going to match up with the tree or the branch of the rock that I'm attaching it to. And all they do is cause attention. So attention meaning from human beings. So when I'm setting trail cameras, I'm setting predominantly to avoid humans. I don't want some opportunistic prick to come and take my camera. And many of them have in the past. And uh, just for a side note, you know who the worst culprits have been so far is sheep hunters. Sheep hunters from BC to Alaska I've had. They, that's where I've lost, I think I probably lost a dozen cameras to sheep hunters. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but anyway, whatever. That was just a little side note. So what I did was, like this, this black thin string here, it's, it's very high tense, uh, strong string. It's actually used for sewing gill nets for commercial fishermen. And it's black, it's very subtle. You can rarely, if any, if ever, see that attached to a tree, right? It's, it's basically invisible. And when I'm going to retrieve my cameras, especially after I've left them through a winter time, and I know I'm coming up to where they should be, and I might be on the opposite side of the tree that the camera's facing, and I'm trying to find that string as I'm going up to the tree, and I rarely see this string until I'm probably within, I don't know, 20 feet, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'll just see that string. So that's the number one reason why I switch up to a string, is so that humans don't notice it. Okay. Another thing that a lot of people do to mess up is they put these things at eye level, a human eye level. That's a big mistake. Um, or even lower, and if you put them a little bit lower, that can potentially get predators to annihilate your cameras. And I've had bears annihilate a handful of them, but it didn't take me long to catch on to. It's not good to put cameras low. Okay. And then other, a lot of you people probably say, oh, well, there's uh, steel cases you can buy to put around the camera for that. Well, sure there is. but. I don't care. I'm not going to put a big bulky steel case around my camera because I don't want to put it at that level or this level or even from this level down because of humans. I put a big bulky steel case around that thing. It's just going to stand out like a sore thumb to potential humans and theft. So I don't do that either. The simple remedy to all the above to predators, usually, mostly, and humans is to put it high up. So. I always put my cameras, no matter where I am, up high, that high. Humans don't look up and I angle them down a bit and I always put them lengthwise on the trail, never crossways, ever. I've had some friends in the past do some cameras for me and I've told them flat out, don't put the camera crossways to the trail. You're just going to get a bunch of hind quarter pictures. And I've had people do that anyway. And we just got a bunch of hind quarter pictures of various game animals. So. You never put them across the trail. It's always facing down the trail or up the trail. Okay, always as a rule, no matter what. So once you get your camera on there, I I never, rarely, ever set on photograph myself. Why? Because it's just such a. It's it's just a, it's a, the trigger speed might be too slow. I might set it for three, I've tried it before, I've started the past, I've set it for three photos consecutive, and it just, it just never seems to, uh, to pay off for me. And if it does, it's, it's, a, it's an angle on the game animal I didn't want. Um, it might have triggered too slow, and I only got a piece of the, of the game animal. So, I always 
always set my cameras on video every single time. And I set them for 15, 10 to 15 second videos with about a, a one second or a three second trigger pause. Meaning it takes that 10 to 15 second video and there's a three second pause and it takes it again. And the reason I do that is because the game animal that initially triggers that camera, it might be a female of the species I want to get a video of, and that male might be coming up right behind her. Obviously, she goes, hits the camera, pauses for a little bit, stands there, potentially maybe, carries on, video dies, the buck or the boar or the bull comes through, and you might maybe get a videotape of him, maybe, or a kind quarter, just the tail end of him running through, possibly. So I want the fastest trigger trigger time possible setting to resume videotaping as soon as I can on that camera. Now, when you do that, a lot of you might think, yeah, well, what about branch branches and wind triggering the camera? Well, that's another thing. I've seen a lot of friends of mine have showed me the trail camera photos and the videos, and there's grass or branches or a branch right in front of it. And when at nighttime, when that IR flash goes off, it'll illuminate what's in front of it and anything beyond it is a lot more darker. So if you have branches in front of you, it takes up most of that infrared shine and reflection, and it blackens out what's what's triggered the camera, and you might get a pair of eyes glowing in the, in the IR field, or just a faint outline, and that sucks. So um, I will take every single blade of grass, every single potential branch, and I'll also take snow load into account. Because like this, even this timber right around me, typically in the winter, right where I'm right now, there's going to be about this much snow. It's a lot of snow, sometimes even deeper. Now, when that snow hits, all these overhanging branches load up with snow and they'll bend down. So when you set that camera, when there's no snow in the fall or whenever, it's going to look crystal clear. You come back, maybe later on it's snowed. And then these branches are hanging down in front of your camera and you have a dead battery because this went off in the wind or the snow and it killed your battery and you got nothing it's a waste of time and that sucks. So for me living where I live in British Columbia, snow is a huge factor and I make sure that I reach way up above my camera or to break off any potential branches that are going to weigh down and sog with the snow or I set on a tree that doesn't have those branches. Okay, so. My number one concern setting these cameras is humans. Number two is predators. Tied for number one concern is all the, the greenery, the foliage, the branches in front of your camera. That's potentially gonna set it off. Um, another thing, what else is set up a camera? Sometimes in the right time of year, in the summertime, insects will set off your camera. So obviously nothing you can do about that. Birds, squirrels do it all the time. Nothing you can do about it. But you actually, it's not a bad thing to see because then you know the quality of your camera is pretty good if an insect is triggering it or a squirrel in the distance is triggering it. It's like, okay, cool. When you see that, then you know this camera is probably not going to fail when, when the money shot comes, right? Now, as far as quality goes with cameras and consistently consistent success with them and smooth working for the cameras, I've been, I mean, I've been doing this long enough now. Um, with various cameras, like I think, I'm not trying to brag or anything, it's just by, by coincidence, I believe I was the first person to ever get stone sheep on a trail camera ever. You let me know if anybody else beat me to it, but that was when I had my first couple trail cameras and I was guiding and I thought, oh my God, this is gonna be really cool. And I, I left the cameras up on top of the sheep hill on a, on a salt lick and let her rip for the fall. It's very exciting for me and my guide partner and the hunters because we obviously weren't familiar with with trail cameras then, so it was just absolutely cool to see the stuff on the on the trail at that time and up on top of the mountain. But well, what I'm getting at is I've been using these for a long time. Um, I've spent a pile of money on trail cameras over the years, probably over 20,000 bucks easily. And the amount of time hiking into the mountains, flying in a plane, renting a vehicle and hiking into the mountains, taking horses in the mountains just to set up a pile of cameras, it's an investment as well, right? And uh, what I've found is it doesn't matter the brand of trail camera. I've never ever come across a brand of trail camera that was 100% successful every single time. And reason being, this is my theory, I can't confirm this, but it makes sense to me is the majority of these items are made in China. First off, they're not North American made, which as you all know, that means less quality right out, right out the gate. But 
it doesn't it seems it doesn't matter the brand like some some stealth cameras I think I've had maybe two out of 15 still work and they work forever I went and picked them up in the spring they're still working from leaving them in the fall and the snow came sometimes covered them froze melted thawed rain everything and uh, that camera was still running it was unbelievable same with this other crappy you this camera right here I've had a couple of these that did the same performance but yeah it's probably 10 to 1 10 to 1 conservative I had about 10 of these cameras one works the way it's supposed to now if you are goal oriented with your hunting which I have become over the years selective and I, I like to have a target animal that I want to harvest I know it's past its prime ready to go and it's just a thing I like to do um, and I'll come onto a trail and I know this trail is absolutely important it's one of my best trails ever and I will double up cameras on that same spot I'll put a camera here sometimes I'll put one right above or I'll put a camera on this end of the trail facing down the trail and I'll put one on another tree facing this way on the trail to double my chances of, of not experience experiencing camera fail like I think just a few videos back I, I retrieved seven cameras in one day last week and uh, I had four trail camera fails all brands <laughs> it's failed and that really really sucked and some of those were on some very important trail intersections and I only had one camera and on the absolute best intersection my most important intersection of the trail I put two cameras up and sure enough one of my cameras was moved by a bear or moved by a snow load and it angled down to the ground and it missed a pile and the other camera I had for backup was less megapixels less quality video but that sucker performed right through the winter all the way into spring and it it recovered what the other camera didn't pick up for me okay and uh, that's very important so as a rule now I will double up and sometimes even triple up on the same trail because I don't want to miss a thing and what I found since I've been doing that and I do that just at home here I will do that to I think I have around five different trails that I double the cameras up and you would not believe and and you think one of the cameras is your best camera and it misses even though it's still working it missed and that second camera proves what it picks up and what it doesn't pick up and it's amazing how many how many items go dead in front of that best camera you've got and it doesn't trigger it just doesn't trigger that day why I haven't a clue I haven't a clue I wish I did I wish I knew how to build these so I could build them perfect myself and get them out there to everybody but so far to date there isn't a perfect trail camera you know I've even even Reconyx you know those Reconyx whatever they're however you pronounce it they're very expensive cameras North American made I bought two of them seven or eight hundred bucks from damn thing they fail you know one of them goes and it just takes photographs non-stop until the battery runs out I don't know why and then that same camera I'll reset it again I'll put it up on the tree it'll take some good photos a couple good videos and then BAM it just takes off into absolute non-stop photographic photograph taking and it won't stop kills the battery loads me up with 2500 photos of dog shit and that's a piss off when you dump seven hundred dollars in the damn thing right so if I can offer up any advice it is if you have a target game animal or even for security whatever if you have something that is absolutely important to you to get it on trail camera you're gonna have to double them up double them up and pre-test every single camera at home before you even get in the truck I don't know how many times over the years but in the past I screw up and I just go grab all the trail cameras buy all the new batteries for them get the new SD cards load them up hit in the woods trap strap them onto the tree and leave and they come back oh this one didn't work oh that one didn't work right so it takes a little bit of time especially if you got a pile of cameras but just sit back in the chair at the desk pile them up on one side have the good box and the bad box and test every single one of them I'll just load up the batteries load up the SD card put it on the kitchen sink or in the living room and uh, forget about it while I'm doing the rest of them and it'll pick up movement if I have it facing my chair in the office or whatever and then I will be certain that those cameras worked before I took them out in the woods and placed them right makes sense but sometimes we get lazy we're in too much of a rush you figure it's probably gonna work because you just bought it and you fire mode anyway now another thing what do these cameras do 
Another common failure with these things is, is, I don't know why, I've had a handful of cameras of various brands, not every brand, and they do flip into that auto video or photo and they don't stop. You know, they'll get triggered by a game animal and then it'll do its 10 or 15 second video. Pause for three seconds, do it again, pause, do it again, pause, do it again, until the battery's dead. Drives me freaking nuts. And then you take that same camera home, you want to smash it with a hammer, you reset it, you put the battery's SD card in it, it works perfect again. And then you try it again at home, well, it works good. It's not repeating anymore, perfect. Take it out in the woods, does it again, <laughs> you know? So getting back to the China mention, I didn't finish up on that, I am I am convinced that at the factory where these are made, there's good batches and there's bad batches. Why do I think that? It's because I can buy the same brand, the same model from the same store. I'll usually buy, sometimes I'll buy half a dozen at a time, I've bought 20 at a time. And uh, let's say I buy a half a dozen in November. Throw them in the woods, a couple fail, as usual. Um, a year later, maybe one or two is still working smooth, the rest are screwed. And then maybe that next following season, I'll buy another half dozen, same brand, same store, and every single one of them will work. <laughs> so obviously, whoever's manufacturing them is having a good day and a bad day in the office when they're creating these cameras, okay? Maybe they got a flunky dirt bag out there who didn't update something to do with the equipment creating these things, didn't care, it doesn't matter, they're getting paid anyway, and besides that, who's gonna jump up and down and scream loud enough to make it all the way back to the manufacturer from us? On average, it's not gonna happen. We bitch about it on, online like I am now, and we go buy more, right? So, um, everybody, another thing too, is everybody says, what's your favorite camera? And you know, I'm, I might have a camera now that I'm ready to promote, but I think I'll have to talk to them about that. Obviously, promoting somebody's business for the, for them to make money off our asses, my ass, isn't uh, isn't going to happen for free, right? Especially after all the money I've dumped on these cameras and and had so many losses. Uh, what else? You know, if you you have to you have to be persistent when it comes to successful trail camera catches. And you have to be creative, and you have to really stand back and think about where you're putting that camera. You know, because sometimes you'll put a camera in a spot. And you'll go back to it and there'll be nothing there the odd animal and you'll keep on being persistent in that spot and it just sucks and i guess it's, it's, it comes to being more familiar with your zone of where you know it's going to be consistent where it's going to suck and not be too consistent kind of slow and you really have to sit down and think about the time of year where you're putting that camera and what the chances are it's going to come through with a bunch of real cool items you know like you can see here, over the years, I've come up with some real lucky stuff. You know, this one ramps, I, I climbed up in this one area specifically targeting, targeting bighorn sheep, and uh, I seen these beds underneath one solo tree way up in this mountain, and I managed to put the camera on the, on the one tree, angling straight down, and I even threw some salt down there for the hell of it, and I come up with this one catch right here that was incredible, I love it, I've, I've posted a bunch of times. I've come up with a uh, black bear running through the forest with a stone sheep in its mouth. I've had, uh, cats chasing uh, bighorn sheep through a, no, I've had cougars chasing cougars through through trail cam before, grizzly bears, basically you name it, I've had it on trail camera, right? And some of my more impressive captures have been moose at nighttime. Uh, a big bull moose facing the camera at nighttime is, is a pretty cool catch. It's, it's a real neat thing to, to capture and share. But yeah, I think of all the years I've been playing with these things, I've definitely had a lot of blacktail deer on them. That's my that's my bread and butter for me, as I've been pursuing some monstrous sized blacktail bucks over the years. And uh, when I'm hunting for myself at home, and I put I lay the cameras out. I still have cameras out today that I can't get to because of the snow. Still, I can't wait to get them. But uh, yeah, blacktail deer, moose. We got white-tailed deer on them. Elk, mountain sheep, stone sheep, mountain goats, wolverine. Bobcats, lynx, cougars, wolves, black bears, grizzly bears, doll sheep. <laughs> you know, we've had, uh, we've basically, wild hogs in Alabama. Yeah, I've set cameras from Alabama to Alaska over the years. Wild hogs, um, turkeys, wild turkeys, grouse, everything. You name it in North America, we basically got it on, on trail camera. I haven't, I haven't had, uh, I definitely haven't been in polar bear zones for trail cameras, that's for sure or uh, pronghorn antelope, I don't live near those either, but yeah, mule deer, have mule deer on the cameras. We've done it all, 
but in the end, if you could take some of the knowledge and experience that I've, I've gained over the years that I just mentioned in this video and apply it to what you're doing at home, and it'll help pick up your consistency. And if it's a target animal or target anything that you're after is very important to you, I strongly suggest you double up cameras. That's the only way to go. You can't, you can't throw all your eggs in one basket, meaning that one camera in your most important spot. Just don't do it. Every one of my best cameras has failed. Every single one of them has a mind of its own and it'll decide whether or not it's gonna trigger that day. And if you only have that one camera and it triggers, and then your next video on that camera is two days later, three days later, triggers again, obviously you're, only, you're gonna think there's nothing there, but when you double it up, you would not believe how many animals pass through that camera and the camera didn't go off. It's amazing. It's a little disheartening, frustrating, but it is truly amazing and it's true. Um, that's just the way it is. So set your cameras high above human head level, change the straps to a thin, thin string, put it where, where angle it down on the trail, do it lengthwise on the trail. Um, what else? Make sure you pull every potential branch above it, break it off out of the way so the snow load can't reach the lens with that branch later on. If it's springtime, you're setting the camera, like it's springtime right now, you can see all this underbrush starting to grow up. Well, this stuff is all gonna be like, just where I'm standing, it's gonna be this deep in no time. And when you have underbrush like this growing up, well, guess where it's gonna be in front of that camera, right on the trail, it's gonna be everywhere and you're not gonna be there to snap it all off and clean it off. So you wanna to get to a trail that's gonna have very little growth during the growth season. If it's springtime, you're doing it because I've had that happen too. I've set, I've set cameras up in cool spots for sheep even, in rocks, gone back months later and grass grew up right there in front of the camera. Grass I didn't even know was there when I set the camera. It's like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. You know, six months later, even a year later after setting those cameras for mountain sheep and I got blocked from from little shrubs or little grass growing up. I didn't even know we're there. So try to be familiar with the vegetation that grows in your area. Don't set it low enough or onto where a bush is gonna grow up and trigger the camera off, all right? And double them up. Double them up, stick them on that tree, angle them down onto the trail lengthwise, never across the trail. I'll show you some, some examples here of what happens when you put it across the trail. It sucks, okay? So that is the deal with the trail cameras. And then I'll take uh, one more mention. I guess I haven't really looked into it overly too much about the IR glow, or the, the glow that comes off of the cameras when they trigger in the darkness, but the majority of them do. You know, like stealth cameras have had that, that neon green screen, bink, comes live when the camera triggers, has a little light on it that triggers, that comes on when the camera triggers. Um, I thought about putting some black tape over top of that, but if it comes to game animals, especially predators, wolves, wolves don't like this stuff. When they become aware of a trail camera, it, they see it, they recognize it, it scares them, they leave, they never come back. That's how, that's how sensitive a wolf can be, okay? And as far as, you know, bears go, they see that light go off, it catches their attention, they're, they're gonna come over, investigate it, and chew the crap out of it. Human beings, they see that glow, boom. No more, no more trail camera, right? So I try to go, I will go where there's no people. I rarely get people on my trail cameras anymore. I used to, but not anymore. I just go where there's no people all the time so I can have a little more you know, calm of mind when I'm leaving all this money out there and nobody's gonna steal it. But if I'm on a popular trail, game trail, that might cross, say, a mountain bike trail or a hiking trail or whatever popular spot for people to go, go that extra half a kilometer or quarter kilometer or whatever, just go that extra mile on that same trail and set somewhere else where those people aren't gonna go. Avoid people at all costs when it comes to these things, okay? And uh, that is about it. So I get, I get tons and tons of people ask me questions about trail cameras, which one, how do you set it, what do you set it on, and uh, hopefully this covers everything. I believe I did cover this in our Big Game Hunting app, in the Blacktail Hunter app, and the Moose Hunter app. I'm pretty sure I did cover trail cameras in all those apps, if you have them or you're gonna get them. And, uh, and uh, if, you, if you require that extra knowledge, that extra, that extra boost, grab those hunting apps, all right? They work without the internet connection anywhere you go and they're just jammed full of knowledge. There's no selling in them and there's no trying to get your money 
for products through them. It's just straight up honest knowledge, handy knowledge that's going to save you time, money, and make you more successful no matter what you're doing. All right? So there you go. That is the deal with trail cameras, and that's what I do.